Now that our game is all set up, the last part of our project is to make sure the user can enter invalid words like this one right here. Now we're going to implement this as four small methods, each of which performs exactly one check. We'll figure out, is the word original? Has it been used before or not? Is the word possible? I'll uh, try to spell dzdf dzdf from renaming, for example. Uh, is the word real? Is it actually a real word? Again, dzdf is clearly not. Now, if you pay attention there, you just notice I said there were only three methods in that list. When I said there were four, the fourth one is there to handle error messages being shown more easily. Anyway, we'll start with the first method. This will accept a string as its only parameter. I return true or false depending on whether that has been used before or not. We already have a used words array, so we can pass the word into there and say, does this array contain the string or not? And send the result straight back. So I'll write func is original, word string returns bool. And I'll write not used words that contains that word. So used words contains the word, we true if it's in there or not. And we're flipping around, so we'll say if it does contain it, the word is not original, it's false. That's one method down already, nice and easy. Second one, slightly trickier. How can we check whether a random word of X letters can be made out of letters from another word? There are a couple of ways we can tackle this, but the easiest one is if we make a variable copy of our root word, in this case it's renaming here, we can then loop over each letter of our user's input word and then say, is that in our root word or not? If it is, we remove the letter from our copy so it can't be used twice and then continue. If we get to the end of the user's word successfully, it means the word is good. Otherwise, there's a mistake and we return false. So here's our second method. Funk is possible word string turns a bool. So again, get a copy of our root words, we can modify it freely. And then loop over every letter in the word we're spelling. We'll now say, can we find that in our uh, temp word or not? So if let pause the position is temp word dot first index of a letter. If we find this letter in our temporary word, position into here. We found it, we'll do temp word dot remove at position. Remove that from our temporary copy of the root word, so it can't be used again. If we couldn't find the letter, stop searching, stop looping over, just send back false immediately. We couldn't find this letter in the word somewhere, bail out. But if we got to the end of the loop, we got over every letter in the word, they were all in there, great. We'll return true. That word was indeed possible. The final method's harder, because we've got to use UI text checker from UI kit. Now remember, in order to safely bridge Swift strings to objective C strings, we have to create an NS range with a UTF-16 count of our Swift string. This is not nice, I know, but it's currently unavoidable until Apple cleans up these APIs, and I've begged them to do this API better. I'm hoping iOS 18, if you're watching this video in uh, June next year or later, hopefully it'll be so much nicer now with a ni new Swifty API for the same thing. Right now, we're sucking in the doldrums, we've got to do it the old fashioned way. And so, our last method will make a UI text checker to scan strings for misspelling words. We'll make an NS range to span the entire length of our string, call range of misspelled word on our text checker, so it'll say where the wrong word is spelled. And when that finishes, get back another NS range where the misspelled word is. But if the word's okay, that'll come back with NS not found at its location. So, I do not like doing this, but there you go, we'll stuck with it, I'm afraid. Funk is real word string returns a bool. We'll make our checker be a new UI text checker. Our range will be an NS range with location zero and length of our input word utf16 dot count. And now we can find the, oops, misspelled, misspelled range is our checker dot range of misspelled word in, input word, range range, starting at zero, wrap false, language en. Like that. 
when that comes back, again, when I check this thing, check whether misspelled range location is equal to the special location, NS not found. Because there were no optionals in bit of C. Those are our three methods. Now, before we can use them, I want to add some code to make showing alerts easier when there are errors for words not possible or not real or has been used previously. First things first, we'll add some new state to track the various things for our alert. We'll say at state private var error title is empty string. Then at state private var error message again empty string. And at state state private var showing error is false. No alert by default. And now we can add a method that sets a title and message based on the parameters it receives. Then flip showing error to true to show an alert. So down here, we're gonna say func word error with title string and message string. I'll just copy into the values. So we'll do error title is title, error message is message, and showing error is true. Something's gone wrong. We then want to pass these values, all three of them, directly onto SwiftUI with an alert modifier. So back in our SwiftUI view, uh, doo -doo -doo, here we go. I'm going to say, show an alert. The title of our error title is presented, will be done when showing error is true. Inside the alert, I'll make an empty OK button with no action, like this, boom. And then we'll do a message of text error message, like that. At this point, we've done the same code multiple times, so hopefully it's second nature. We've done quite a few alerts at this point. In fact, now you're familiar with basic alerts like this one, here's a pro tip for you. Um, we've been doing a lot of this kind of thing, button OK, open and close, whatever. Uh, if you don't include any buttons in your alert, if you just write that, then you automatically get an OK button. It provides one for you to dismiss the alert. It's just the same thing. So you can, if you want to, effectively just write that. Um, it looks strange. <laughs> I think it looks odd, um, but choose whatever style you prefer. At long last, it's time to finish our game because we already made space for this validation method we wrote previously down here with this extra validation to come marker here. So we're gonna say, in place of this comment, Guard is original, word is our answer. Else, do a word error. Title, word used already, message, be more original. And then bail out. Uh, if we have guard is possible, word answer. Else, if it's not possible, word error, title, word not possible. And then message, you can't spell that word from and a single quote with root word inside like that and return. And finally, uh, we'll do guard is real word answer. Else, do a word error, the title word not recognized. Message being, uh, you can't just make them up, you know and then return. So, if you run the app now, you should find it refuse to let you use words if they fail our test. I've got hatchery here, so I'm gonna try in hatch. Valid choice, in it goes. I'll try hatch again, hit enter. Ah, be more original, didn't work. I'll try spelling out, let's do thatch. Not possible, you can't spell that word from here. I'm gonna make the word uh, <laughs> which you can spell from the letters, but is not real. And so our tests work really nicely. They fail our tests, duplicate words, fake words, whatever, gibberish words so you don't work. It's really, really nice and clear on the screen. And that is another app done. Good job.